Hello everyone and a warm welcome to our latest Directions Live Online webinar. Just take a quick moment to let some stragglers join us for our 12.30 start. Now, my, my name is Alex and I'll be your host for today's session. And as a reminder, um, before we get started, that we are recording this webinar and we'll be sending out a link to the recording later this week. So if you don't get, if you want to rewatch any sections and or send to your colleagues, then you can. Also, please do ask questions throughout the webinar. We have uh, a function on the webinar panel here where you can um, type any questions out and hopefully we'll be able to get them, answer them at the end of the session. We should have plenty of time to do so. Now, today we'll be talking about creating smart and safe cities using NearMap data in ArcGIS. We are joined today by a guest speaker, Fletcher Hayward from NearMap and Esri Australia's own Seth Gorey, who have been devising some scenarios with which to explore the NearMap datasets within the ArcGIS platform. Now, Fletcher has worked in GIS for the past five years and predominantly been using Esri products. He has been interested in aerial imagery and mapping for a long time and has, been, has earned his BSc from Macquarie University with a double major in environmental management and spatial information science. Now, Seth, he's a innovative solutions consultant with an extensive experience in facilitating community engagements in Australia, New Zealand, and the Pacific Islands. Seth leverages advanced technical skills and experience across the ArcGIS platform, applying his knowledge to advise on best practice solutions across many industries, including smart communities. Without further ado, I'll hand it over to Fletcher and Seth to take us through today's webinar. Thank you, Alex. And hello, everyone. It's great that you could join us today uh, for an update on integrating your NearMap data across the ArcGIS platform. Well, today's webinar will focus on the use of ArcGIS apps hydrated by NearMap 2D and 3D data for both the public safety and emergency services sectors. No doubt, and hopefully, um, the solutions we touch on will also resonate with the diverse range of sectors attending today's session. If you reflect on the events around the world this past week, it is evident that the world and the communities in which you serve are under increasing pressure, whether it be people protesting across Asia or the plight of plantations in the Amazon. Access to timely near map imagery across the ArcGIS platform is just one way organizations can better prepare, respond, recover, and prevent these events whether they be global or local examples. For the remainder of today's webinar, we're going to use this PRRP framework to demonstrate which ArcGIS apps complemented by NearMap 2D and 3D data might best assist you and your organization to create safer communities. So to kick things off, and uh, the pun is intended, let's jump down to Melbourne, Victoria, and a stadium normally home to AFL, but was last week the scene for a historic win by the Australian men's basketball team over the star-studded Team USA. Thanks for that, Alex and Seth. So the first stage of any event is to prepare for it. Um, and using Excel, uh, Esri's Pixel Editor uh, is a great tool to combine with uh, NearMap's aerial imagery. So in this video, we've got, uh, we're gonna use the uh, Pixel Editor. So if you, this is the Marvel Stadium, um, and if you zoom in, you can see the people. That's because Esri, uh, sorry, NearMap's imagery is really high quality with a seven and a half centimeter pixel. So sometimes when pre preparing for events, we wanna see that imagery with no cars. So you can use the pixel editor to select these cars, then select an area that you want similarly, similar, and then it, just click and it, it wipes out those cars. Um, similar again with the people, you can select them. And once you've selected them, select a similar area and it will it will wipe out those people so you, it, you've got clear base imagery to work from. And once you zoom out, you can see the whole thing is nice and clear and it is much easier to prepare for that event. Uh, the next one is the respond part. So once you do have an event that occurs, you can 
respond to it. So using ArcGIS Pro to remotely communicate change, we are gonna zoom over to Perth. So uh, last week in Perth, no, not last week, last month in Perth, uh, Australia beat the All Blacks. Um, but this is the construction stage of, of that Perth stadium, of Optus Stadium in Perth. Um, the imagery shows the construction of the stadium. And as time goes on, you can see that the stadium, the access ways to the stadium have changed. So it used to be a golf course, and then it became a construction site. That construction site developed, and we finally have, have the stadium itself. Um, using NearMap imagery and ArcGIS Pro, you can plan routes for access to the site. What are your thoughts on this, Seth? Well, Fletcher, I like the solution, uh, but however, I really don't like the context uh, being an avid All Blacks fan myself. But it's really important here uh, to see how the timely near map imagery of high resolution complements and supports your workflows as whether it's uh, from a public safety emergency management space. But in this example, we are creating new spaces. Now, from a fire access and um, fire and life safety perspective, as those new spaces are created in 2D and 3D, um, then the near map timely imagery complements any operational data sets that we may remotely uh, edit in, say, a web app um, to move on to the next phase, whether it be a response and the recovery. Uh, and on that note, we'll pass back to you now, Fletcher. Thanks again, Seth. Uh, the, yeah, the next stage, as Seth was saying, is the recovery stage. So. In this, we're using a web service in ArcGIS Online, um, and I created an ArcGIS Online web map, and I brought in NearMap's WMS that shows both the imagery from the 2011 floods, as well as the underneath that we've got the most recent capture. Um, as you can see from the imagery here, we've got a wide-ranging flood flooded area. Um, and this imagery is ca our imagery is captured at a, a nicely high frequency in in capital cities. We we aim to do it six times a year, um, and this one was a, a bespoke capture where we went out and flew because those floods had happened. The this is Suncorp Stadium, and you can see here there's the access access points to the stadium, and then you can see that there's one on the western side that is totally blocked by that flooding. Um, we can add in other layers such as access points, sorry, access paths, as well as um, the flooding extents. That blue area is the, the polygon of the flooding extent. And that orange line that I've drawn is, is approximate um, access paths that can be used by emergency services to move in and move out of that area. Uh, Seth, can this be used in Esri's ArcGIS apps? Uh, yeah, great question, Fletcher. Um, it can be yeah, yeah, used in this phase during the recovery phase or, or the former, so the, even the response phase. So I can think of some good examples such as the new uh, quick capture for ArcGIS solution. Now you may have some field intel, so opportunistic drive-by uh, of your crews and they see standing water. That might be complementary operational data uh, that may support your recovery phase. And likewise, uh, once that uh, those points, lines, and polygons that you, as you see you've depicted here um, have been contributed to your portal or ArcGIS Online. Uh, there's no reason why in the recovery phase, members of other crews or different personas in your organization might pick up those features to do further QA and QC. So uh, uh, um, apps that you're probably familiar with in our field mobility um, solution offering, like uh, Collector or Survey123, have been used by many of you in the emergency services and public safety sector. Um, and we're having that near map event imagery in a timely manner, uh, both complements those field and uh, office space workflows. Back to you, Fletcher. Thanks, Seth. Uh, the next stage is the prevention stage. So no one ever wants an, a bad thing to happen. So the best way to do it is to prevent it. So we're going to use exploratory analysis in ArcGIS Pro to create view sheds for security camera placement. So 
I'm just going to go through the process of of actually creating these these view shed analyses analyses using ArcGIS Pro and our new map 3D imagery. So it's first first you've got to create a a new project. Um, I've called this project ANZ Stadium Sydney because we're looking at ANZ Stadium and we're going to cover the different access points of ANZ, ANZ Stadium. Um, once it's finished creating the project, we will. You can export. Um, you can export the three D directly from our near map uh, map browser, and bring it in to and save it as a uh, Esri SLPK, which is a scene layer package. You can then drag and drop that Olympic Park SLPK that I've got there and bring it straight into ArcGIS Pro where it will load up immediately. Um, I've then gone, I, I, I'm going to set the projection uh, both vertically and uh, the horizontal projection. So to do that, you click on the scene, right click on the scene, go to properties, And it, uh, yeah, then you can go to your coordinate systems, set the vertical as AHD, and then because we're in Sydney, I'm going to use the uh, MGA56 uh, projected coordinate system. The 3D quality of our imagery, our, our 3D is created from photogrammetry. So we fly airplanes and we capture our normal imagery, but we also have a new camera system that scans from side to side, collecting 45 degree angled photos from all over the areas that we scan. From that, we can create a photogrammetric mesh, and that's what you can see in this 3D view right now. Um, so this is uh, ANZ Stadium, as I was saying, and using this in ArcGIS Pro, you can create view shed analysis. So if you go to the analysis tab and then you can open up the view sheds uh, window on the side that I've got here. Um, so you can set all of your initial uh, parameters that you'd like. So the heading, which direction it's facing, how high or lower it's tilted um, and the offset, but you can also use the indicative placement. So you can just click on that mesh somewhere. It will place that point and display the view shed then you can pan around select and drag that um, that viewing location both left and right and up and down and it will display in green what you can see and in purple what you can't see uh, or what's in shadow um, I'm, i'll put two in just for an example so I just click it, that indicative placement again, place it where I want to put it, and then you can drag to drag it across so that there is that overlap. The yellow color that you can see there is the overlapped area, so that's where both cameras can currently see. Um, from there, Currently, the ground is um, showing uh, the world elevation profile instead of the th near map imagery. So that, because of the projections, is a little off. So I've, I'm going to remove that so that it's nice and visible. And you can see that along the ground, it's still visible instead of purple where it shouldn't be. Um, from there, um, you, you have a nice visible 3D image that you can send to clients, police, and other security forces. Thanks, uh, Fletcher. I far prefer this uh, context. Many are victories uh, at, at the stadium by the mighty All Blacks. <laughs> uh, but also thank you, Fletcher, for it's great to see the advancements in near maps offerings um, and how they might um, uh, or how public safety and emergency services staff might benefit from integrating both your 2D as well as the new 3D offerings, as we saw from ANZ Stadium. 
um, across our, our clients' ArcGIS platform deployments. So let's just recap quickly on what we're seeing today. Um, we explored the prepare, respond, recover, and prevent steps um, for public safety and emergency management. So in the prepare phase, um, we demonstrated how the new pixel editor tool in ArcGIS Pro can be applied to the latest near map imagery to assist with visualizing cleared areas uh, for planned major events. Uh, in the respond, um, we saw how a constant change of construction activities um, provided the context within the ArcGIS platform uh, to edit supporting operational, say, feature layers, um, whether it's from Pro or ArcGIS Online or, or your portal um, as part of your enterprise deployment. Um, and these could be used for, for planning out major events as well. In the respond phase, we oh, sorry, in the recovery phase, we saw how Nearmap's web services access from ArcGIS Online provide point in time imagery to aid with, uh, say, recovery efforts. Um, the example given in Brisbane uh, from both the office or, as I alluded to, um, the range of Esri's uh, field mobility apps uh, can also be used. So, uh, some common ones being Collector and uh, Survey123. And these can be used to update or do the QA and QC, the quality control, against any field intel that's being captured as in former phases. And lastly, uh, in the prevention phase, we saw how the new 3D photo mesh from Nearmap can aid in um, major event surveillance operations, or perhaps to see where the next victory of the Mighty All Blacks is going to be. Looks like that Novotel is a, a good spot to be. And we can use these as part of lessons learned to brief um, or onboard uh, new staff members, um, perhaps for planning the next major event, and thus capturing the full prepare, respond, recover, and prevention lifecycle, which we know is commonly used by public safety and emergency management organizations that we have joining us in today's uh, webinar. Great. Thanks, Fletcher and Seth. It's definitely really great to see the practical benefit of the high resolution aerial imagery from near map and how it really integrates with the ArcGIS platform uh, in, the, in the wider context of both desktop as well as the field apps. Um, right, so I'll open up the floor to a few questions that have come in as we've been speaking of the scenario management. Um, We've got one here from Ben. He says, Pixel Editor looks great, uh, like a great tool to use as our organization prepares uh, to clear ways for upcoming fest the festive season events. How can we access this capability within Pro to prepare for special events like New Year's Eve? Seth or Fletcher? Uh, sure, I, I don't mind taking that one. Um, great question. Thanks, uh, Ben. Um, so it does go without saying that um, Pixel Editor is. Uh, only available with ArcGIS Pro. Um, so if that's not a compelling reason to pivot to Pro from legacy uh, desktop, um, say, users um, using ArcGIS um, or ArcMap, then there's a good um, uh, reason to, to pivot. Um, and this new tool was actually introduced at the 2.4 version of ArcGIS Pro. A couple of things to, to note is um, it does require the image analyst uh, desktop extension. Um, and the inputs for the tool, as you saw from the near map um, imagery, um, they must be like raster data um, and they can't be like uh, in a mosaic data set perhaps, but there's other ways and means to do raster based analysis. Um, but that raster data set might not be the latest near map imagery. It could also be a DEM or DSM um, that you have on hand. Uh, Pixel Editor is another uh, is a perfect candidate to use with your other raster data sets. I hope that uh, tends to your question, Ben. Great. Thanks, there, Seth. I've got another one here from Stephanie. Uh, she says, our organization currently has NIMAP photo mesh data. How can we view it on mobile? And when does the ArcGIS Earth mobile application get released? I've heard good things about it. So I believe that the SLPK that you can download directly from our map browser can be brought straight into uh, ArcGIS Earth. Um, there is a beta program for ArcGIS Earth on a mobile, um, and I'll throw over to Seth to talk a little bit more about that. 
Thanks, Fletcher. Yeah, so you can upload the SLPK um, to your ArcGIS Online or, or portal uh, as part of your ArcGIS Enterprise deployment. Um, what this will do behind the scenes is it's going to generate for you a, a scene service um, uh, of that photo mesh, which you can then mash up and configure um, with other operational data sets um, in, say, Scene Viewer. Um, or a 3D application such as uh, Web App Builder in the 3D mode. Or for those of you who have been um, uh, using the latest and greatest story maps templates, uh, ArcGIS story maps, or even the new Experience Builder, which is um, currently out in beta. So if you hadn't, hadn't had a play with that, check out experience.artgis.com. These are all perfect parts of the ArcGIS platform to leverage the photo mesh from NearMap, as well as any other photo mesh that you have available across your, your platform. And the second question, Alex, um, it was about Earth, but for mobile? Uh, yeah, that's right. So when the pilot's released, it's going to be released. Okay, um, yeah, so uh, ArcGIS Earth, the mobile application, um, it was uh, one of the most subscribed to uh, beta releases of all the ArcGIS apps across the, the field suite, um, both in iOS and Android. I believe there's more than 60,000 um, Android um, uh, downloads, which is, is great to see. Um, so it's due to release within the next month. Um, so stay tuned and uh, on the ArcGIS blog site uh, for that um, uh, announcement. Um, and importantly, it won't require a named user, like its desktop cousin or equivalent. However, as I always convey to clients, it's, it's always better to have your mapping portal in your pocket. So you will be able to connect to your ArcGIS Online account, for instance, which you've, you're subscribing to the near map imagery from Marketplace. Um, uh, and there's some really neat things um, that are coming in the ArcGIS um, Earth mobile app. Um, Fletcher showed us how the view share capability in Pro. Um, that's analysis feature is coming to ArcGIS Earth mobile app. Uh, which will allow you to create view sheds uh, from your phone, um, or you could actually become uh, Spider-Man. So um, there's a line of sight analysis tool, which probably suits the Marvel Stadium's uh, new persona, um, which I think we can all agree, um, which was the, the first phase of our, uh, our demonstration in today's webinar. Thanks, uh, Seth and Fletcher. Uh, we've got probably time for just one more question. Um, coming from James and he says thanks for the webinar we are having some difficulty with our newly purchased near near map web services and getting them into our ArcGIS online organizational account is there any documentation available to assist with this integration or who can we turn to in order to assist thanks for that uh, we have on our near map website we've got a, a section called docs.newmap.com um, in there you'll find a whole bunch of information about how to use NearMap, how you'd like to bring it into your ArcGIS platforms, including ArcGIS Pro, ArcMap, and, um, our, and ArcGIS Online. So from there, you can bring in a WMS or you can access it directly from the ArcGIS Marketplace. Um, from there, you can bring it straight into your programs. Um, you can also contact, uh, if, you, if you don't have a if, if you are having more trouble, um, the best way to get in contact with us is by emailing us at support at nearmap.com. Um, if, if you believe that's uh, the reason is because of your nearmap account as opposed to the way that you're trying to get it in. Um, yeah, um, and also from the um, Ezra Australia side, um, so we've been working collaboratively with NearMap for a number of years now um, with a range of clients, um, including most recently um, with a commercial real estate client in, um, in Australia. Um, and I'd say, um, yeah, don't hesitate to reach out um, to your respective account managers on both sides of the fence. Of the fence. Um, and just a reminder, um, uh, if you do feel that um, or believe that the integration uh, issue stems from the ArcGIS platform side, um, then hit up our support at um, uh, uh with your uh, details of your issue. Um, one example as of late is um, 
uh, there's a couple um, uh, workflows to resolve with secure WMTS from Neomap in our mobile solutions. Um, so yeah, feel free to reach out to both uh, ours as well as um, the Neomap support team um, uh, uh, when, the, when you have time available. Great, thanks, Seth. Uh, got one here from uh, from last one, I think. Uh, we'll squeeze it in with from Peter, and he says, uh, "Great 3D mesh mapping feature." Uh, question: How do you challenge? How do you challenge to overcome the color scheme purple and green for colorblind people? Uh, that's actually reasonably easy. All you have to do is you can go into the, the settings of that um, that view shed analysis and you can change the colors manually. You can set them to whatever RGB color you'd prefer and from there you can adjust it so that it is easy to see for those who are colorblind. Great, thanks Fletcher. I think that's probably all we've got time for today. If we've not answered any of your questions, I'll make sure I'll forward them on to Fletcher and Seth, who will hopefully be able to answer you, answer them appropriately, either from the ArcGIS side or near map side. Um, now we've got coming up uh, later on in our uh, webinar series or, or our event series, we have um, a uh, MOOC, uh, go, which is Going Places with Spatial Analysis, hosted by Esri Inc., uh, which aims to gain a deeper understanding of of the spatial data analysis and this course is for people who know something about data analysis and also want to learn the special capabilities of spatial data and you'll be you'll be able to get free access to the full analytical capabilities of ArcGIS online and Esri yeah Esri's cloud-based platform Next up on our Directions Live Online series, we have uh, SmarterWorks integration with ArcGIS Pro. Now, SmarterWorks is a, a, um, a partner product with Esri Australia, and it covers the workflows, including the dial before you dig response automation and inquiry collation, and how it integrates with the ArcGIS platform's operational dashboard, ArcGIS field apps, and many more. So. If you can sign up to these events on our webpage, uh, esriaustraliacomau slash webinars. Also, of course, we have our Osri 2019 uh, user conference, which is set for mid-November in Brisbane, Melbourne, and, and Sydney. You can also go to the website and sign up there. Always, there is a chance to, as always, there's also a chance to submit, submit feedback for the end of the webinar, so please take time to fill out a brief survey which will pop up when we end this session. Uh, further feedback or questions can be sent directly to events at esriaustralia.com. And if you want to rewatch we that webinar, as I said before, we'll post a link from our YouTube channel later on this week. A big thank you to both Seth and Fletcher for coming in and sharing us all about Nearmap and ArcGIS platform integrations. Hope to see you again at next Directions Live online session. Thanks, everyone.